So Monday was a great night for all the handicappers here at the site. Everybody was on Kansas City. I don't think anybody had Denver last night. But, of course, Kansas City. Got to wonder what Andy Reid was thinking there with Tyreek Hill trying to throw the uh, pass to the end zone that was intercepted when Kansas City could have taken an even bigger lead early in the game. And then the Chiefs let Can uh, Denver creep back into the game, uh, cutting the deficit to seven. And then the Chiefs did come up with some defensive stops but were saddled with just field goal attempts, making the score a lot closer and the game a lot closer than a lot of us would have appreciated. But they did get the cover because the Broncos able to run the ball. Again, the Chiefs unable to stop them defensively on the ground, but unable to get anything going passing-wise because Trevor Simeon simply isn't an NFL quarterback. That's pretty damn obvious. And the Broncos' offensive line couldn't give them any pass protection either. So Kansas City gets the job done, and Eric Schrader, does it again on the heels of the second ever 200 dime play of his career with Buffalo crushing uh, the Oakland Raiders on Sunday, which you got for over half price off last night, the seventh ever 100 dime NFL release of his career, cashing with Kansas City. You got that for over half price off tonight, the seventh ever 100 dime college football play of his career. It's on your Bowling Green Kent State game. And again, you get that for over half price off simply by using coupon code ERIC, just like last night. Also, props going out to Chris Jordan, made it four for four with his top-rated 1,000-star NBA releases, as he gave you last night. 1,000-star uh, NBA winner number 26 out of 34, the Orlando Magic, an eight-point underdog on the road, winning outright at New Orleans. Well, tonight, he raises the bar his first. 2,000 star double your wager NBA release goes tonight and it's NBA 2,000 star double your wager winner number 25 out of 33 going back to last season Sacramento in Indiana and you get it for also half price off excuse me over half price off by using coupon code double double the word double and that's among your featured plays going tonight. Okay, let me dip my toes into the Mid-American Conference, not one of my favorite conferences. As for me, I managed to snap a five-game, uh, five-day losing streak, which is the same thing as a five-game losing streak. Uh, last night, I gave you the Kansas City Chiefs as a free play here. Um, I thought there was a great play in the NBA last night, and I want to talk about situational handicapping briefly here for a moment. Now, listen, I, as I wrote in my analysis yesterday, I think a great situational play in the NBA is going against a team playing the second of back-to-back -back, uh, games, especially when that team is coming off a loss and playing the second of back-to-backs on the road. But there is an exception to every rule, and that is where situational handicapping also comes into play when I looked at the Golden State Warriors last night. Golden State was coming off a loss at home to Detroit the night prior. They were on the road last night against the Clippers. So if you listen to what I just said, that would mean that you would go against Golden State. That's a situational play, right? But you have to dig deeper. The other part of that situational handicapping philosophy is this. You had to look at why Golden State lost to Detroit the night prior, because Golden State turned the ball over 25 times, because Golden State just decided to not play any defense, because Golden State's head coach, Steve Kerr, after the game told you in no uncertain terms he was not happy with his team's defensive effort, a defensive effort that saw the Warriors blow a 14-point third-quarter lead and give up a zillion points to the Pistons, not exactly an offensive juggernaut, saw the Pistons shoot lights out from three-point range. So you knew the defending champions, based on what Kerr said, you knew he wasn't happy, and they, as defending champions, weren't happy with themselves. You knew you were going to see an intense defensive effort the following night, last night, in L.A. against a Clippers team that, even though they don't have Chris Paul, these are still the same Clippers, and there's no love loss between the Warriors and the Clippers, right? Then you also had to look at the Clippers. Yes, they also, ironically, were coming off a loss to the Detroit Pistons in their last game, their first of the season, at home against Detroit. And they had started off 4-0. But as I pointed out, you had to look a little deeper and say, well, who the hell did they beat? They beat the Lakers at home. They beat the Suns at home. They beat a bunch of nobodies, poor teams, the Utah Jazz, who are in a rebuilding phase. They beat nobody. And then they beat the Portland Trailblazers on the road on a buzzer beater. That was the best of the worst, shall we say. And then they lose to the Detroit Pistons at home. So what happens? Golden State undervalued at five and a half. If they had won the night before, they probably would have been seven and a half to eight. They come out and they absolutely drill 
drill the Clippers last night and win that game going away as a five and a half point road chalk, an absolutely brutal uh, victory for them. Uh, oh, Jesus, I can't even remember what the final score was. It was like 141 to 113. So again, situational handicapping. You have to sometimes look past the numbers and dig down, look at the game and consider all the variables around it when you look at these contests. So let's again, take a look at the Mid-American Conference game t- tonight between Ohio and Miami of Ohio. By the way, for those of you that happen to be on Jeopardy next week, let me just tell you this showdown, which I think has been going since 1904, perhaps, is called the Battle of the Bricks. I don't know why. Listen, I was to- I told you that much. Go figure it out yourself. I, I can only tell you so much, guys. You know, I can't tell you everything. Uh, the Battle of the Bricks, the Bobcats. That's Ohio. It's coming off a 48-3 home win against Kent. 447 total yards in that contest, 336 of them coming on the round. They're the 17th uh, rushing team in the nation in terms of yards produced per game, averaging 245. Their quarterback, a sophomore with the name of Nathan Wark, 55% passer, thrown for a little over 1,200 yards this season, 10 touchdowns, three interceptions. But he's also run for 500 yards and 13 more scores. They have a uh, two-headed ground game. Uh, Alouette, I think as you pronounce the one running back, A.J. Alouette and Dorian Brown, who have run for 753 and 443 yards respectively. So this is a team that can definitely move the chains on the ground. Now, um, prior game, they won 48-30 to at Bowling Green. The game before that, they were upset actually at home, 26-23 to Central Michigan, and that snapped a three-game losing streak. Their only other loss came in week two when they lost at Purdue. Nothing to be embarrassed about there. The Red Hawks, that's Miami of Ohio. They're coming off a 24-14 home win against Buffalo. The week prior, they lost 17-14 to at Kent State. Again, that's the same Golden Flash team that Ohio just beat 48-3 to at home last week. Ohio won last year's game 17-7 to on the road. Now, what makes this game tough to handicap is that Miami of Ohio's quarterback, Gus Ragland, is questionable because of a leg injury, and he really makes that offense go. Um, they're another one of those teams, just about all the teams it seems in the Mid-American Conference like to run that spread option attack. He's a guy who averages 223 yards passing a game, 12 touchdowns, 52% passer. If he doesn't go, Billy Ball, who averages only 153 yards passing a game, who has started the last two, played in the last three, only has two touchdowns, two interceptions on the year, not nearly as effective, would get the starting nod tonight. I've waited till later in the day to do this video report because I've been trying to find out, see if there's been any late-breaking word. They just say that he has a chance to play tonight. That is Ragland. It's tough, but I'll tell you what, I still like Ohio playing at home, whether or not Raglan plays, because Ohio is clearly the superior team. I feel that uh, they will be able to run effectively against Miami of Ohio. I know it's a big rivalry game. Again, Mid-American Conference is not my cup of tea, but I do like Ohio minus the points in this one. In the NBA, I was looking at the Brooklyn Nets team, a Nets team that's coming off back-to-back losses to the New York Knicks on the road, 107-86. to and 124 to 111 at home to the Denver Nuggets. A Nuggets game that got out of control in the third quarter when the Nets missed 14 of their first 16 shots and uh, watched the Nuggets go on a 31 to 6 run to put them away. Remember, that was their first home loss, and those two straight losses came after they upset LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Meanwhile, the Suns are coming off a 114 to 107 loss at Portland, but the two games prior, They had knocked off the Kings and the Jazz at home, and that came after they sent Eric Bledsoe home, after they made the coaching change and fired Earl Watson. Now, this will be their only third road game of the season. They are 0-2 on the highway, losing, as I said, to Portland, losing 130-88 previously uh, against the Clippers. (sighs) For the Nets, you know, this is their final home game before they start a five-game road trip. And really... They're going to be on the road quite a bit because they're going to play nine of their next 13 on the road. It does bother me a little bit that D'Angelo Russell, who started the season red hot, four first four games averaging 23 points a game, then he missed a couple of games with a knee problem, and the two games since he's been back, both losses, he's shot nine for 22, one for eight from three-point land. 
It also bothers me that Damari Carroll, who's hitting at a 41% clip with three-pointers, is questionable tonight. It bothers me that Quincy AC, who's hitting at a 52.4% with three-pointers tonight, is going to miss his second straight game. Nets have won nine of the last 11, but the Suns are playing with a little confidence now, and I never thought they were as bad as they appeared to be at the outset of the season. Now, Brooklyn definitely has some firepower here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go with the Nets here and look for them to rebound at home tonight. Um, I like the way they were playing prior to these last couple of contests. I like them at home, and I still have questions about the Suns' defense. And, yeah, I like Booker. I like the Suns to put some points on the board. I lean a little toward the over, but I'm willing to take a shot with the Nets here, minus the points at home in this contest. So Ohio would be my favorite of the two plays, but I also like the Brooklyn Nets as well. And that'll do it, and we'll do it again here, guys. Uh, what, uh, Wednesday? Oh, and happy Halloween if you're going to go trick-or-treating tonight. Good luck, everybody. Talk to you again tomorrow.